The Catherine Cook Show. I'm Catherine, and I'm a leadership development coach and owner of K Adina Coaching. And I love helping people reach further than they thought possible. This show is all about helping you realize your dreams. We're going to talk about different barriers that people see when they're trying to reach career goals. And then we're going to meet people who found ways to knock down those barriers. And then I'm going to give you some guidance on how you can do the same in your own life. Today, I want to talk about vision, vision and drivers. So for example, I tell myself that my vision is to be thinner so I can be healthier. But somehow that does not get me to the gym and I still love chocolate and pizza. But then once I look at my clothes and they start to get a little thinner or there's something in particular I wanna wear, all of a sudden I find myself on treadmill. It wasn't until I got honest with myself with what my drivers are and that is to feel confident, to be able to present myself confidently and part of that is being thinner so therefore, I change the way some of my, goal, my goals are seen. Instead of looking at numbers, I look at the clothes. And that's helped get me to where I want to be. And speaking of vision, today I have with me Karen Stacy, good friend and mentor, who is the president of Creative Learning Solutions and the chief learning officer. She's going to share with us a process that she uses to help people get to their goals faster and with more success. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Catherine. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm looking forward to sharing a process that I use. I've used myself, and mm -hmm. I also use with many of my clients to get some clarity around vision. Uh, oftentimes, what I find is that we um, tend to make a list of goals, thinking that those goals are going to get us to the end result. Mm -hmm. And when we get there, we work really hard at completing the goals. And we arrive there and somehow we've missed the point. We're not feeling fulfilled. We haven't felt like we have reached the level that we want to. And so my, um, my process or, or what I work with people to do is to figure out, you know, how do you get to that vision? And how do you make sure that when you get there, you've achieved exactly what you want? It, it's not about ticking off goals. Okay. So can you give me an example of a goal that doesn't help you meet that vision? Mm -hmm. um, well, one thing that I run across um, quite a bit, because I do a lot of work with people who are looking to transition in their jobs, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out how do I get there. And what I often find is some people are really good at writing goals, mm -hmm. and they decide they want to make more money, for instance, and the way to get there is to get a promotion. And let's say you move up the hierarchy of, of an organization and they decide, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work really hard to become a manager. And they realize that goal and they get there and they're making more money. But yet at the end of the day, they have become stressed out. They're not happy. They've lost their passion. And they're confused because it's like, I thought this is really where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm and yet I'm no better off or I'm in a worse place than I was before that. So, you know, it's not always about the goals. Okay, all right. So can you tell me a little bit more about the plan and process? About the plan and process, sure. So, I mean, one of the things that um, becomes important is that you, you create a plan and, and creating that plan means really starting at the end. Mm -hmm and being very clear about what it is that you want to achieve. And starting there and working your way back. Um, because oftentimes what happens is we choose goals or we choose actions because they are actions that are visible to us. Mm -hmm. okay, it's what we know and it's easy for us. And we don't always see the actions or the goals that we need to take because they're what we consider invisible. And they usually, those invisible goals are the things that create or, or require a lot of change. And change is really, really hard. Yes, change is definitely hard. Why is it that change is so difficult and sometimes because it's so difficult, we get in our own way and we don't accomplish the goal? That's, that's a really good question. I actually brought a slide with me today um, to, 
to to highlight um, the um, first of all the system, okay, um, and then um, and what you'll see is um, with this system we start with the results, okay, okay, and the results are the visible sort of the visible aspects of where we are, and we in cased in those things that are visible are the actions that we take, okay? There are things that we can see that we do. Mm -hmm. The choices and options that we make and um, options that we choose and goals, okay? okay. So, so those are very visible to us. We can see them, we can feel them, we can, we can see how they progress. Within a, the system, we also have what we call the invisible side of the, of the system. And those are the things that get in our way sometimes because we're not even sh sure of what they are. So for instance, when you're growing up, between the ages of like eight to 13, mm -hmm. you're creating your system and your belief systems, your perceptions of things, your assumptions of how things work. And those start to become very ingrained in your system. So typically what happens is we're starting with goals we're not recognizing that there's all this other stuff that could get in our way of being successful. And, or they know that, that all that other stuff is really hard. Mm -hmm. And so that brings us to the change model. And so if we look at the next slide, we see that creating real change is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And, and we, you know, we both experienced that in, in what we've done and mm -hmm. in our practices and starting our businesses and all of that. So oftentimes what happens is when you've decided you are going to create a change for yourself, you're going to set off on a goal or a vision, mm -hmm. um, you start off what we call uninformed, I mean, uh, inform, uninformed optimism. In other words, you're all pumped. Okay. Right? It's like... I can do this, this is going to be really good, this is going to change my life. Um, okay. You know, for instance, I'm going to lose weight, right? Yeah, I'm going to do it at the gym, I'm going to do this, and, and you're all pumped and ready to go. Like okay. December 31st, January 1st, that's There you go, there yeah. you go, right? And then what happens? You sort of fall <laughs> off the wagon. It's like yeah. the roller coaster, right? And all yeah. of a sudden you're like, I can't do this, I don't want to get up in the morning. And so recognizing that's a natural part of change is really the first key because that brings us down into what we call uninformed pessimism. Those are the things that we didn't know were important drivers for us. They might be some of the things that are, were invisible for us. And at this point, doubt starts to seep in or disappointment. I can't believe I couldn't keep this goal. I couldn't stay on track. And what we need to do is, is to recognize that in ourselves. This is a natural part of change. And what we need to do is we need to be patient, number one. Mm -hmm. okay? We need to realign and reassess. You know, why isn't it I don't want to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym? You know, what's really driving that? And we don't always ask ourselves that question. Can you give me some example of, uh, you said some of the drivers that, we, that <clears throat> uninformed pessimism mm -hmm. is based, is about drivers that we didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some examples? So some examples of that might be, um, you know, again, you, you're all charged off, say that you're, you're going to go to the gym yeah. and you're going to lose weight and you're so, so excited about it and you join the gym, you pay, you know, you pay the fees and everything and then, you know, come, it, Come January 31st, you're like, okay, now I'm only going once a week, if that, mm -hmm. okay? Well, maybe the gym wasn't the right way to go. Okay. Maybe you don't want to be solo, standing on a treadmill. Maybe your personality type and your style might be, I really need to join a spin class because I like that social interaction and that's what my real driver is. Or I'm gonna sign up and, um, and get involved in a, a women's basketball team. Mm -hmm. That's my real driver. Okay, So the driver sense. might be more social versus I've chosen something that is less social. Okay. okay. So we start to recognize that and that's where a really good coach can help you kind of dig through that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, once we reassess 
and we persist, it brings us back up to what we call hope. Okay. All right. So now we're hopeful. We're, we've refined where we're going. We've relooked at it. We've reassessed, and we're in that space. Mm -hmm. okay? But sure enough, something else is going to happen because life just happens. And at that point, we may dip into what we call informed pessimism. And informed pessimism, it's like, now I know what I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, it's about stepping back and saying, okay, so what's going on here? You know, what is happening? Um, am I listening to other people telling me, no, you shouldn't be spending your time doing that? Or that wasn't really the right career choice. Am I letting that static get in, our, in my way? But now I have a, a deeper understanding because I've started to look inside those invisible systems and have a, have a better understanding. So that's more of an analysis step, more of a self-analysis? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so at that point, we may need to refine mm -hmm. our goals, our actions. We need to relook at things, readjust, and decide that we're going to move forward and be persistent and sort of refresh. And with that refresh, that brings us up, back up on the roller coaster to what we consider informed optimism. Okay? At informed optimism, that's where we start to get to that level of confidence and mm -hmm. certain, I can, you know what, I can do this. And I also recognize I'm going to run into roadblocks along the way. And that's okay because I know I can overcome them and I can manage those effectively to still get to my vision. And we start to then start to recognize or realize some of the benefits of our vision. Okay. That leads to stability. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's getting through that change model. That's, that's the hard part. All right. So do you think you're willing to walk us through the process? I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. So we call it the results roadmap mm -hmm. because like, like any journey you're on, uh, if you were to decide to head today from here to, say, San Francisco, you wouldn't just jump in the car and head off and expect to be there in a week. Um, that would be impossible. So a results roadmap is really about creating your map for you. Okay. okay. The difference is we start with the results. The result is not the goals. And you'll notice that the goals are on the left-hand side of the roadmap. Yeah. We start here on the right. Okay. So... We're going to, if, you, if you'd like to go through the process with me, oh, absolutely. I, I'd love to take you through it. And, and we'll, um, we'll kind of go through how I do this in a very short period of time. This oh, typically right. takes a couple of hours Okay. Um, when I work with, this, work with my clients because we really dig deep and we ask a lot of questions and, and give people a lot of time to think. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just sort of rock it through it with you. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm excited. All right, good. All right, so my first question is, um, tell me about a result, a vision that you have, say, for, um, for yourself. I want to have, I want to continue to have a growing practice and I want to really make a difference in people's lives. Okay, all right, great. That is a fabulous goal. Thank you. I'm wondering, once you achieve that goal, mm -hmm. what will that do for you? How will you feel when you've achieved that? I'll definitely feel a sense of satisfaction. Okay. And a sense of purpose. Okay, great. That is your vision. The side of achieving a sense of satisfaction, satisfaction. And, and, and purpose is the vision, not that's your growing vision. the business. Exactly. Exactly. So you know what? I'm going to have you write okay. that down. Okay. And we're going to keep track of it. I brought a results roadmap with me that we mm -hmm. can start to build. Okay? And then I can then put, post this up in my apartment yes. so I can see. So every morning you wake up, you'll know exactly what you're supposed to do. Okay. okay? I love that. I love the idea of having a visual, a visual map. Mm -hmm. So I keep it in front of my, in front of me. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to have you write down satisfaction and a sense of purpose. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. So we're so we're going to put this out here because that is where 
everything else is going to lead to. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and on another sticky, I'm going to have you write that first goal that you shared with me. Um, oh, that I want to grow my business. Mm-hmm. I want to grow my business with work that makes a difference. Terrific. Okay, so we're going to put this in the goal section. Okay. Now, typically when I'm working with my clients, I, we might have two, three, maybe even four goals that they're going to work on to get here. Okay? So for today, um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to have you write one more goal. So what might be one more goal? that will help you get to your results. And I'll have you write that down on that blue okay. pad. Um, I think one more goal, business relationships. Okay. Developing some satisfying business relationships. Okay, great. So I want to develop strong and satisfying business relationships all right terrific all right so we're gonna put that here okay okay all right now the next yep. step is there are gonna be some actions mm -hmm. and options that you have to to actually make these goals happen right okay and also that will get you here okay okay so think of some some actions that you might want to take or some options that you might have that would help to support your goals mm -hmm. and also to support your vision. And I'm going to have you actually write those down on a different color. Okay. Because it's all about keeping, keeping it visual. Okay. So it, what might be an option or an action that you could take that could, could help well, you support I mean, those goals? Business relationships, going to networking events. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Okay. Great. And again, for today's and purpose, let's um, let's come up with maybe one more. To make a difference, maybe some volunteer projects. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Good. All right, so what we've done here, and again, typically we'd have many, many more of those so mm -hmm. that you would have some very you know, specific tasks that you could, you could embark on. Um, so what we've done right now is we've covered what we would consider the visible stuff. Now can I ask, is there a specific number of tasks that you generally go for? Do you generally try to say four to six, 10 to 12, or just as many as you can possibly yeah. think of? That's a really good question. You want it to be manageable. Mm -hmm. so, Typically what I'll do is help, help people just kind of brainstorm okay. and come up with as many as they can. And then we put some perspective around it. Ah, okay? makes sense. So um, what we would do is, is say, all right, what's doable now? What's, mm -hmm. What might be something you will work into? And so you're always, you, you always have a plan in place. And, and I find that sometimes too, when we come back and visit this, someone will look at something that they list in like, yeah, that's not really going to happen. Okay. You know, so it gives you an opportunity at least to get it out mm -hmm. and then come back and say, all right, this is realistic. Okay. That makes all right. sense. All right. So as I said, this is kind of covers all your visible stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the next piece is to start to look at what we call your perceptions, your beliefs, your expectations, and your assumptions. And these often reside in our invisible space. Mm -hmm. So they're invisible either because they're things we don't recognize in ourselves, maybe other people do, mm -hmm. but we might not recognize, or they're perceptions, beliefs, and expectations and assumptions that we have that might be difficult for us to change. And we just would rather not go there. Okay. okay? So um, this is where we can really start to dig and start to look at what some of those things are, okay? Some of these perceptions, beliefs, expectations, and assumptions are gonna work for us. Mm -hmm. Some of them are gonna work against us in terms of getting here. Okay. Okay? Okay. So, um, so what I usually ask is, I usually ask my clients a couple of questions. So first of all, um, here, here are two statements that I'd like you, to get, like you to complete. Okay. All right, and again, 
for today, we're just going to keep it really simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will have you jot your answers down on these. Okay. So the things I tell myself about my ability to achieve my desired results are? My thing I tell myself about my ability to... I tell myself... I tell myself that I can do this. Okay. And I tell myself that I'm committed to making it, to doing this. Okay, good. So let's capture that. Okay. So that's a belief that you have. Okay, so I am committed and I am able to do this. Great. All right, and we're actually gonna put this here for now. Oh, okay. For the moment. Then um, the next question is other thoughts that might interfere with achieving my desired results are. <laughs> and you only want to do a short list. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you can see where this could take some time. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with time. Okay. Time is generally one of the biggest things. So to develop and grow, it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So it will take a lot of time. Terrific. Oh, All right, and good. you're not putting And it. I'm just gonna put those right here for okay. now. Okay. You'll notice we have everything fairly color-coded. I did notice yes. that. Yes. Dark blue, light blue. Absolutely. The next step is to look at habits, and we all have them. It's just the way we go about doing our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of our habits work for us. Some of us work against us. Mm -hmm. and, but it's really important to reflect on what those might be. Okay? So again, there's a number of questions that I typically would ask a client to think about in terms of the habit. But for, day, for today, I am, now I'm going to give you orange. I'm going to okay. ask you three questions. And the first question that I'd like you to answer is, the behaviors I practice that will help me achieve my desired results are? Behaviors that will help me achieve my desired results. Um, you know what? I will try anything for two weeks. Okay. All right, good. I'll try anything for two <laughs> weeks. Okay, good. I'm gonna put those oh. here. Okay. Okay. And then the next question, the, pra the behaviors I practice that interfere with achieving my results are? I, so, am I want the results now. I am okay. impatient. Okay, and we know that change requires patience. Yes, uh, it does, unfortunately. Yes, okay. All right, so that's good. But it's, it's good it's, to identify. It's important. So mm -hmm. I can be impatient. Excellent. Okay, great. And then the next question, the new habit I need to put into a place to achieve my desired result is, and this takes some self-reflection, so what's a habit you need to change to achieve your desired result? And you only want one. Yeah, yeah I do. For today. <laughs> okay. We can go back and do this at another time. Okay. <laughs> but for today. You know what? I think I'm going to have to go back to the time thing. Mm-hmm. I think it, I just need to plan my time more effectively. Okay. Okay. So... I plan my time effectively. Terrific. All right, great. So then the last question that we're going to focus on is recognizing um, external support as well as external um, obstacles that we might run into. So okay. these are the things that, um, the obstacles might be things that we don't feel we have any control over. Mm -hmm. And support are those support systems that you have that you know you can turn to that will you know, help you when you're struggling with those changes, when you're trying to figure out how to make something work. There's sort of your sense of reason. Mm -hmm. um, or 
or um, the resources that you can use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can be a variety of, of things, but there's something outside of yourself. Okay. All right, so given that, um, what might be an external support system that you have that would help you reach your goal well, and, your, and your vision? While you were saying it, the thing that came up is my friends. Okay. I have amazing friends. Okay, great. All right, so close friends. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to put that on the top side of the map because this, this okay. will stand for the, for the things that are positive. Okay. Okay. And what might be an obstacle that you could think of that could get in the way? Uh, back to the time. Okay, <laughs> good. I'm going to, the biggest obstacle I have is my current work schedule. Okay. All right. Terrific. Okay, so again, because of time, um, typically what I would, we do is then I would have people take their stickies mm -hmm. and we start to prioritize them. Anything that we have, we feel we um, are most important mm -hmm. to achieving this, we put it close to the line. Okay. All right, so for instance, um, with yours, um, in terms of perceptions and beliefs, we would put this here, say close. That's a perception you have that's very strong for you. Yes. Okay. And up here, I'm committed and able to do this. This is a, uh, this is a belief that you have that's very strong. Okay? okay. And then you sort of pile it out. Okay. Okay. And then the same thing with the habits. Habits that you have that you feel are very strong in getting in the way, that would go, you know, here and anything that is positive you put it here so you start to put your positives up your negatives down okay okay and then I have a, a slide that I want to show you quickly and to say how do we make how do we make sense of all of that and so this is what a, a real road map would look like okay and if we move forward in that road map if you look at everything in the center that is considered our our critical path okay well, thank you so much. You're and so welcome. And hopefully everyone has been watching and starting to make their own roadmap. So I challenge you now, what are some goals and things that you want to accomplish? Feel free to email me at Catherine at kadina, K-A-D-I-N-A coaching.com and we can talk about some of your goals. Karen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank it's you, Catherine. It's been fun. Thank you.